What is happening, everybody? Welcome back to another live stream here, another demystify where we demystify the process that you want demystified. How, how did that sound, Deborah? <laughs> More complicated than I needed it to be. <laughs> Perfect. Well, we're here with Deborah Wright, of course. If you were following the last couple of weeks, then you're in luck because we're continuing that process. If you were not following the last couple of weeks, you're in luck because we also have content for you. We have project files for you. And we also have all the stuff on VOD on YouTube. So do not worry. We have your back. I'll be sharing that stuff in the comments of here very, very, very soon. Before we get started and let Deborah take the wheel and drive, we just got to go over just a couple, just a couple things. First things first is we are Maxon, so we have all the tools for you to create anything and everything that you would like to do. So from ZBrush to Sima 4D, Redshift Universe, Red Giant, Trap Code, et cetera, the list goes on. We have a bunch of stuff for you guys to help with your creative process and needs. So definitely check it out. And while you're there, you might as well check out the Maxon events where we actually showcase all of the stuff that we do. Training here at Maxon is something that we pride ourselves on and we want to deliver all of that awesome information. So here it is. Definitely go check out the links. You can already see we have week four on the books for Deborah to come in and finalize the project. But of course we have VFX and Chill, which is one of our super high-end uh, shows with, uh, with Hashi and Seth, as well as Ask the Trainer, where you go and you ask the trainer questions. So that's always fun. And then if you're still here on this website, you go to Cineversity where you can start learning the software now in really simple breakdown tutorials, AKA we're doing like ZBrush. So if you come here, you click on ZBrush and you'll see here that there are about 24 videos here with Anna Carolina, shout out to her, go check her out as well. But she broke down this entire series in bite-sized chunks for just a few minutes. So you could definitely come through and actually learn these tools very quick, fast and effective. And then, you know, we like giving stuff and things away. So let me just quickly come over here and just showcase right here. I'm going to copy and paste all this good jazz. But, oh, actually, it looks like it's happening in the background. So we'll be dropping in the comments in the background. But, of course, here, go grab your free T-shirt. And if you're a Pokemon trainer collector of things and such and you have them all, that's awesome. Have another one. But also, too, you should tag us. You should take a photo of all the shirts laid out and then tag at least Max on myself, even Deborah. I'd be like, look, have them all. And then, <laughs> then we have Deborah's website. Um, there, we're also sharing the Instagram links for Deborah as well. But if you want to know more about Deborah and everything that she does, as well as the project files, definitely go ahead and check all of that stuff out. So, you know, we just dropped all these links for you. Without further ado, though, let's go ahead and Deborah, I'm going to share your screen and I'm going to let you go back and uh, start talking about the process. Well, thank you so much, Ian. This has been really an amazing experience for me to take apart what it is to do a freelance brief. And uh, oftentimes briefs that are done in a freelance environment are very similar to what you get dropped on your desk if you're working a nine to five. Um, that being said, um, I wanted to just do a little backtracking and remind everybody where we started, what we wanted to get to, and where we left off. So, <clears throat> and also today is going to be about the difference between corrections and changes. And today we're going to speed through the corrections, and then I want to do a whole thing on what it is to be the difference between a change and a correction. And there is, well, most importantly, the financial difference between a correction and a change. And um, fundamentally, what it breaks down to is an agreement between you and your client. And whether you've agreed that it's 10%, 20%, 30% of the project um, can be changed before you start issuing a change order. And that means a change order simply means that you've renegotiated the contract and the change will now be billed either through billable hours or you'll renegotiate another price, you know, whether day rate or, you know, overall gross, you know, financial remuneration. It's, it's all dependent upon how you like to work. Um, but for our purposes, I've created this project in order to demonstrate what happens when, you know, your client decides to, to change 
uh, directions. So this is where we started. This is this is the, um, you know what, and I think I'm going to actually drop this down and open up Photoshop because it's a lot more fun. This is where we started. And this is, was the idea. And then this is what we submitted to them. And then they came back and said, yeah, no, we wanted this. So you've got to change this into that. And we went back and have changed it into that. And now they were happy with that. That's mm -hmm. much, ta -da! There, it's very similar to what their drawing was. It's in the perspective, so it tends to be a little, you know, when we talked about orthographic versus using a dynamic perspective in ZBrush when you can't, when you do some screen grabbing, so it does distort it. But ultimately, that was finished, and we were all done, and they were thrilled with that, and it looked great, but they decided to change their minds. And Which happens all the time. I'm just going to emphasize <laughs> happens all the time in this in, in every industry I've ever dabbled in or worked in even before being an artist I've never met a director or producer who will not change their mind and that's okay so it's it's I think it's it's cool to show that process too here's the thing is that what and we were just talking about this what is in your brain oftentimes doesn't translate into the real world. And because I sculpt for the real world, for the mesh, the, the physical world, not for games or movies, I'm sculpting for something to be produced. Now, we did do, we did touch a little bit on fiber mesh and you can see here, this is what fiber mesh looks like in a preview style, but it's not, it's not how it looks when you render it. And the render is not representational of how it would print. It's, it does it in fact is it's almost unprintable. Fiber mesh is not, is, is not even printable for the most part. And um, so going back and sculpting all those leaves would require an entirely different kind of mindset. But our, um, our client now has come in and has asked us to create something entirely new. And it's Ooh. like, whoa. That's fun. And that's so, and that's like super different, but I love that. Well, what the client being me thought <laughs> is we've already got this mesh. We've already paid this person to create this mesh, but Clearly, the leaves are not going to translate into our little, you know, model. You know, this this little toy, this little figurine. We we're not getting what we want. We're not going to get. We, let's use let's use this model. How can we use this model and get what we want, which is a little collectible? Okay, so they've come back to me and they've said, "All righty, we want actually a little stump that looks like a little house or a little like somebody lives there," and we want, and we're going to give you a couple of assets. We're going to give you an adore asset, and we're going to give you one of our little lantern assets that we've used in other projects. And we want you to incorporate them into our little stump asset. That's very exciting, Yay. very, very thrilling. But how do we get from this to that? Well, nice. Before we move too forward, and we are talking about client changes, and, and what's been amazing, Deborah, is you've been so open with the process of finding work, talking about work, et cetera, mm -hmm. that um, this question came through that I wanted to ask before we go too much further, which was, um, how do you deal with competing with sites like Fiverr, et cetera? Do you find it more difficult to find new work? Is that something you concern yourself with? So I actually got myself on Fiverr about three years ago. and. What I found out is that the kind of people that are using Fiverr really are not coming to my door knowing everything that they really want. And they're looking for me to do more heavy lifting and thinking and designing than I'm willing to, well, than they're willing to pay me for. And because most of my clientele has been, um, entities that already have well-established 
uh, work pipelines, for example, Disney, Disneyland Entertainment. Hi, Scott. Um, <laughs> um, Scott is an amazing designer. And when he draws something, I know that's what he wants. He rarely makes changes. And if he does make changes, it is usually because of functionality, whether the parade float won't work properly or the tug won't sit correctly into whatever it is that we are making. Changes don't happen very often um, that are, you know, <clears throat> you know, take your yeah. breath away. But with Fiverr, it's a really good place to start if you don't have clientele. It's a great place to begin your, your, your journey. Um, and if you're just starting out, my best advice is knock on all the doors. Plaster all the walls with your name. Perfect. Get, get yourself. Presence is important. Being seen is critical. And, you know, don't worry about what it, how do I say this without sounding cavalier? Um, just get out there. And if yeah. Fiverr is a place for you to start, then by gum, start there. But spending more time worrying about what the other guys are doing, to me, has always proved to be fruitless. My, I've always kept my, my, my focus very laser as to what is what I want, what would make me feel the best, and where do I feel that I fit in. Fit in where you can get in is, I think, the, the term. And just focus. Focus on what makes you feel vibrant. And yeah. um, I'll tell you, I don't like cars. And I really don't want to sculpt rocket ships unless they're super gooey and organic. <laughs> um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know, if, if, if they're really round and juicy, I really, really want to sculpt your car or your, your cartoon, um, whatever. But I know me. I know that yeah. anything that I do in the land of, let's say, a Hot Wheel, will be disappointment for everybody and I won't be happy either. So yeah. go with what you know. Absolutely. I, I would also just, just add to that and then I'll let you continue forward is that if you're comfortable live streaming, um, live streaming is a great way to put yourself out there as well because you never know who's watching and it's a great way to showcase your skills, your techniques, and also to just connect with other artists and other people. So that's another way too to kind of get your, get your work out there. <sighs> Well, this is, you know, this is new for me in that I usually work <laughs> in the back rooms and being out here and talking about what I'm doing is really challenging. And I'm really grateful for your patience, everybody. So thank you for allowing Ian to field the questions and, and I'll try to answer them as shortly as possible. <laughs> I think everybody agree. You're doing fantastic. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to get rid of a lot of stuff here. The first thing I really want to do is I want to take a look. I'm going to do see through and I'm going to actually turn my model around because. And you're not seeing it very well. Sorry, guys. Can you see that? Yeah, no, we can see it. It's a little beige. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. OK, you it's could put a darker beige. material on there if you wanted to. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to get out of see-through. That'll solve some of our problems. I now know that this is, and uh, do, 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 I kind of come into more of a gray blue. Build my object. There we go. So our little tree, for the most part, um, I could just start chopping it apart, but I want to ask myself, do I really want to lose all of the, the branches? Because really what I can do is I can Frankenstein some of this. So I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to grab my knife rectangle and I'm going to cut the middle out. Just going to cut it all out and see what I'm left with. Again, <laughs> you have subdivisions on. I know. <laughs> Again, 
The knife brush doesn't work with subdivisions. Just it just FYI. doesn't. It's just like, yep, nope, we're not doing that. Not doing that I today. Do that all the, I know this information, and yet I still do it all the time. Every single time. <laughs> and if I go back and I look at my drawing, I think this is my branch right there. So getting rid of these. We're just going to get rid of those. We'll split the those hidden ones, get rid of that, and voila, we're halfway there already. Do you still call this the hamburger? Uh, pizza box, actually. Oh, the pizza box. Yeah. I've always called it. Has, it. it has an official name. If you hover over it, it'll tell you the official name, which is like, Select all sub tool. No, it's like sub tools all selected, something like that. I can't remember. So, it's, AKA the pizza box. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody remembers it. So, I, I, I like it. Uh, pizza box, not the official name, but people do. It's its nickname and people have embraced it. Um, who, who, who named that? Do you remember? That's a good question. I want to say I want to say Joseph Drust named it that, I'm but I re but I remember hearing it from Shane Olson uh, quite a few years back. So okay. I don't know who coined it, but whoever did, genius. <laughs> yeah, well, it certainly stick stuck in my head. So I'm just getting things set up so that I can. Hello. Move things around. Um, I'm probably going to have to make this little stump a little juicier because it looks like I'm going to have to accommodate a door and a lantern. That's going to be so much fun, though. Oh, it's just, it's painfully cute, isn't it? <laughs> I'm having a hard time with my stylus, man. Oh, so you have it. You have the pen icon selected. So every time, so if you notice the next to the little Google icon thingy up there next to, between the Google icon and the, and the cog wheel, there's a little pin. Pin. That's what and it that's is. turned on. So I that accidentally does. did that. Yes, I did. Thank you. You know what? That, yeah. that really baffled me one time. Like, what the heck? Yeah, so that pen is there to actually lock the gizmo in place. And where that's actually really helpful is if you're doing some gizmo duplicate tricks. So if you actually like need to duplicate from that, you need to duplicate from that location. So you pin that location, you do a duplication, and then it will snap back. And then you can hit one on the keyboard, and it will repeat that action equally from that point. And it will, it will space everything out evenly. That's, that's one of the ways to use that. I have never even thought about using it that way. Now, so I also need to say thank you for this. I am in love with Preview AO. Hey, isn't that cool? Oh, yeah. that was just delicious because look how better my model already looks. I mean, it's already there. Nice. Irene coming in with some knowledge. Madeline um, Shot Spencer. Yeah, gave it this nickname. Oh, that's Perfect. nice. Thank well, you. Oh, I'm so happy for that. Thank you for, for letting me know. Um, yeah. The more you know. It, yeah, <laughs> the more you know, the more you know. Um, I love these these knife brushes. They have they have made my life so much better, infinitely better. Oh yeah. If you're not using a knife brush. You're sleeping. <laughs> uh, yeah. Time to time to party on. Okay. Yeah. That's not exactly what I wanted. So if anybody gonna... doesn't know what the knife brush brush does exactly in ZBrush, what the knife brush does is that it's it very it's very similar to a combination of clip curve and slice, but what it's doing is it will cut the mesh and then it will rebuild the topology as clean as possible, giving you a true watertight mesh. Um, and this is really, really helpful. And so when you're like chopping things up, especially if you're working in DynaMesh or you're working with meshes that, you know, you need to just give it some shape, um, then this is a great brush to come in and start selecting. It does not work on subdivisions 
And the only the only thing to be aware of is that if you have vertices or inverted normals that are colliding or they're kind of like, you know, they're kind of like crushed in between each other, you know, then the knife brush will have a difficult time isolating how to rebuild that topology. So if you're ever using the knife brush and all of a sudden ZBrush just kind of freaks out and maybe crashes or something like that, then just what you do is actually go down to um, your geometry. You want to check your mesh integrity and fish, fix the integrity so that the knife brush actually works. So anytime it happens, just note that there's probably something going on with the mesh. So the cleaner the mesh, the easier it is for that knife brush to work. And being that this is really a juicy mesh, it's got lots going on. Um, crashing has been part of the fun. I've never met a software that doesn't crash. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, you know, I've always viewed having a crash as an opportunity to go get another cup of tea or get a glass of water or stretch to stand the forced up. break. <laughs> yeah. The enforced break, because I can sit here and I can play with this all day long. Okay. So I'd like to go back through what I just went, you know, what I just did just so that people can catch up. Uh, Cause I did do something that um, maybe somebody might have missed is at this point um, I took the gizmo and I used it as a twisting tool and I twisted my tool to get that nice sweep that they're looking for. And we're getting really close to the silhouette of our objective here. And you can find that particular um, action right here. So you've got your gizmo selected, W, E, or R. Hit that, that cog, and this is going to open up this wonderful palette. And I think I went over this last week, but I still think it's really worth mentioning that if you haven't explored this, take some time and just punch some buttons because you're going to find all sorts of new ways to approach your projects. That's going to make your life a lot easier. Yep. I also just dropped the link to like a very specific SC brush where it talks about wrapping a tube around a cylinder, but it covers some of those deformers as well. Oh, so thank definitely. you. Wonderful. So this is going to be a little hut, a little place to live. And we need to cut out our tree and create a room. Um, being that we've got all of this going on here in, in the root ball, um, why don't I use the knife lasso? And we could use the life, knife, <laughs> knife lasso to cut out holes and create our doorway, but the truth of the matter is, is I'd really rather not. I'd, I'd really rather be a little more um, interesting and, uh, how should I put this, reflective of our, our little stump. So we've got a door that I've created that is going to be our magical little door for our friends here and um, their, for their little house. And this door I've created just a simple tool, an outline tool. It's just a tiny, a skosh bigger than our door. And I'm going to fly that into our into our model. Let me make it another color so that we all can see that. And my apologies if, in fact, you're trying to follow along with me and you're not seeing my um, my, my UI is different. Uh, I was offered a challenge by Ian last week to uh, start using the conventional, traditional uh, UI, but... I found that I was really spending a lot of time hunting. So here's my promise to you. I will continue 
relearning the traditional <laughs> UI. I promise, cross my heart, hope you gain 10 okay. pounds. And that way I will be able to be more effective in helping you all out there to do what you need to do because I know that this is a tiny bit of a challenge. Um, okay, so here we have our doorway. Nifty, swell, cool. It's beautiful. I'm digging it. I'm digging it more than I can tell you. And <laughs> let me turn off our branch to get that out of our heads for now. We've got a doorway, but is the doorway enough? Well, actually, it is. And it will get you what you want, which is a feeling of spaciousness behind your door when you've got your 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 um, product printed up. But wouldn't it be more interesting to have an interesting surface on the inside? What I'd like to do now is I'm gonna turn off this tool and I'm going to duplicate my tree. At this point, I'm going to do some serious slash and burn. We're gonna cut wrong way. We're gonna cut. Wrong way. What's well, up? You're all, you're, well, no, no, no. You actually you're showing all the tools. Solo mode out for a second, or like hide the other one, and then um, oh. Control Z a few times. You know what? I think I got it. I think I've got. Hang on. That's interesting. Yeah, go ahead and go ahead and Control Z back to the beginning. There, there it is. Yeah, you just had the other one visible. And mm -hmm. so what you were seeing is you were still seeing the second one, but you cut the other one. Thank you. That would not be the first time that's happened. There you go. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink our tool here just a little bit. And just a tiny bit, and I'm also going to extend it a little bit. And turning, oh, and, and I'm also going to turn it into a live Boolean. Taking it out of solo. And there it is. Nice. We've cut a room out. Now when I add, open this up a little bit. When I turn our doorway cutter on, holy mackerel. Can we zoom in a little bit? Yes, we can. Sweet. We got to show the people. Show the people. <laughs> show the people what, they, what we want. Okay. So we've got a hole going on back there. That's probably from my tree. Let's see. Got to do a little adjusting here. Bring that tree forward just a little bit. Actually, my might need to shrink down a little bit and lengthen it. Push it back. Do we have it? We have all yeah. the edges. Now, so you're seeing that red. That's because my... Um, my cutting tool the for the doorway, it, I, I changed the color. Let me. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, Live Boolean will take into account the color of your subtool that you have selected. Now we have all one color. And I'm excited about this because it went a heck of a lot faster than I wanted it to. I'm like super <laughs> thrilled about that. <laughs> And it's going to give me plenty of time to do the kind of sculpting I want to do. Now, we can cut the boolean right now. We can do it right now, and we'd have a tool to work on. Or we could take the time, and we can muck about with our mesh over here and see if we can do some stuff that will cut down our sculpting time. I'm going to grab, I love this for throwing in goofy, organic uh, shapes, the blob tool. Look mm -hmm. at that. Let's, let's use our um, Sculptress Pro. Mine's down here, the little S. 
to add more topology. And if you ever look at a tree closely, you're going to see that the burls and where a branch has fallen off, there's this, they're like scars around it. So I like that I can throw in um, real quick some indication of where my burls are going to be. For example, in our drawing. Nice. So that's looking like something I could be working with comfortably now. We've got some funny little stuff there, but we'll clean that up in the mix. Um, I'm going to hit make Boolean mesh and see what we come up with. Or do we crash my computer? <laughs> no, no crashy crashies. <laughs> no crashy crashies. In fact, no crashy crashies. There it is. There is our little Boolean mesh. That Nifty deal. It looks wonderful. Oops. Um, now we get to open up that door, bring that door in. We insert that door. There she is. All her glory. Oopsie. And she should fit. She should fit really pretty cleanly. Now, would you, uh, would you, um, like, adjust anything on that door like would you make it thicker would you modify this to if it didn't quite fit i mean it should fit on the structure just the way you built it but like the thickness of the door would you say that's a little too thin and would you try to make any adjustments or would you fit or would you fit the tree to the door instead well i think the thickness is really um important to consider because oh and my gizmo is off so let's get that centered properly. Um, I would give a little more depth to the door because this is going to be a little figurine. Um, sometimes you need to make accommodations for that. And sometimes the really fragile little itty bitty things need to be a little more robust, even though they in real life would be, it'd be far too big. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to do anything, but leave the door there for now because I want to pull my mesh out and start making the doorway. And I also need to tie in, oopsie, I need to tie in the, um, the shapes of the tree, the bark. I need to reestablish this, um, this cutoff here. So I need to come back in with some alphas to make that look like what it's supposed to look like and not just a sliced off tree. Um, nice. It's really cool to see the process and the, th and the thought pro the thought process behind what you're doing as you work. It's just really, it's, it's such a, it's such a cool, um, it's like, like I'm looking in the mind of another artist and watching you work. It, it always, it's always such a pleasure because then I, I think of ideas of like, how would I approach that? And then kind of, you know, always like go back and try new things. So it's, it's so cool to see you work in real time. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I appreciate, like when I watch Shane or Anna is I, I really appreciate seeing how they solve problems. Yes. And they, they do it differently than I do. And that is the beauty of this program is the stunning level of malleability for personal styles and how we approach our own work. You know, my style is different than, than yours and the way I think about things it's different than everybody else. And sometimes I see how, uh, like Anna, comes at things that I would not have thought about it come at it that way. And yeah. I'm really grateful because when I go to school, and I still go to school, I still enjoy being in an environment where I'm being challenged by a teacher. Um, 
whether it's for learning how to do electronics or, you know, harmonica. I took a harmonica class recently and I'm, der I'm terrible at it. I'm absolutely horrible, but I had fun. And I also learned some new stuff about myself. And nice. that's why I enjoy doing, uh, expanding and seeing how people work. You know, it's, it's very interesting to me. 100%. By the way, Sponge D. Bob says hi in the chat. Hey, hey, man. Good to see you. Happy you joined in again. That's so cool. We were talking on um, Twitch a couple of weeks ago and um, was really, really grateful that they decided to come in and spend some time with me. Nice, nice. For anyone who's not sure about Zebras Live or other Zebras artists that go live, I'm going to drop the calendar slash agenda in the chat so everyone can go in. Zebras Live is always active all the time. There's tons of artists. I stream personally every Wednesday from 10 to noon unless I get super busy with work. It's usually that's always the schedule, but sometimes I have to cancel stream. But for the most part, I'm on every Wednesday. So you can always come in and ask questions directly too. Yeah, I'd like, like, plug. <laughs> I'd like to double down on that and say, please be kind to the streamers who are giving their time to you and working at the same time as professionals, because oftentimes we get, well, darn it, we get um, our deadlines pushed up or changed. And it does require us sometimes to stop streaming or cancel a stream. And it's not you know, it's not because we're lazy. It's just that, you know, we can only, <laughs> there's only so much of us. We can only do so much. <laughs> yep. So we, here we are. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to belabor this much more, but I really did want to go back into grabbing some of our alphas that um, I created for our stream here and you can select all the alphas at the same time if you'd like and they'll they'll load them in right up here so i've got all my choices i'm gonna get my first of all first thing first i want to fill my back back of my tree um i want to fill my object so that it looks cohesive and where are we we're at 12 40 great yeah doing great yeah it looks like we've got plenty of topology to work with. So I'm going to, let's see, how does that look? How's that? Yeah. So you can either switch over to Z sub or you can hit your alt key and you're going to get, oh, it's sexy. Look at that. <laughs> it's perfect. Came out just, it came out like perfectly. Exactly I love it. as I wanted it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Speed sculpting live. Oh boy. Um, we are missing something though, aren't we? We are missing our branch. You need and, a branch and a lantern, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna see if I can still if I can let's see where we are. Um yep, we're getting right, we're getting we're getting close. So let me choose that branch. That's the branch that we chose right here. Come back over here. Is that it? Nope. There we are. We're going to bring in our branch. There she is. She's a little short here. She needs to be a little longer. So grabbing my move topology brush, I'm just going to let me anchor out here. You have to make noises. You have to make the noises. Why do we have to make the noises? I'll never know. <laughs> I like that we made the same noise. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you are my brother from another mother. Yep, yep. <laughs> okay. Sponge D. Bob says that they would actually use the new snap feature. And I actually agree. Um, I'm going to be showing Deborah some really cool tools. Yeah, he's going to he's going to show ago. off here. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll, we'll 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 save that for another stream because there's only so much time. But I'll show you the new tools afterwards. And actually, we we um we worked closely with Michael Palfovich, and oh, uh, so a, a shout out to him. We actually um uh, the development team was able to uh, showcase some of the tools to him so that he can pump out some videos for us over the weekend. 
which was really awesome. So I'm going to link to those um, as well. But you can find all of those videos um, on Cineversity as well, because we point to third third party tutorials, not just um, not just our own tutorials. So if you have any really good tutorials, you can always link me those tutorials. I'll take a look. And then if the information is solid, we point to that stuff on Cineversity. So if you know any recommendations, you can always throw that, at, throw that, bleh, throw that at us as well. That was a tongue twister for me for some reason. Dude, I'm so happy I'm not the only one with a rented tongue. That's crazy, right? So in the chat will be a link to that new snap feature that Sponge D Bob just shouted out. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it because really, truly, this is the kind of um, program that just grows and grows and grows. And I am so excited about our ZBrush Summit. I bought my ticket, uh, my airplane ticket. It's Yay. free. <laughs> I will be there. So, yeah. ZBrush Summit is free. You got your plane ticket. That is awesome. I I'll am ready to roll. I've missed my nerd herd. Man, I have missed my nerd herd. It's going to be amazing to have you out here. Honestly, I haven't really related so beautifully with a group of people in my entire life. And the generosity of people who use ZBrush, the generosity of their knowledge, the, their, their desire to share is astonishing. It is absolutely delightful because I also come from a world where, you know, I used to sculpt as a sculpty sculptor and lots of people would get real grippy about, you know, what they do and they're not gonna, they're not gonna tell you their secrets and that right there was always kind of a little bit disappointing. Okay, this is not doing what I want it to do. So I am going to pretend that it's been done and I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> we pretend a lot here. Um, what I'll do is I will make sure that I have all of this um, fluffed and folded for you when you guys open up the files, the project files, it, there will be some clip, some completion done. So never fear. It'll yeah. Be a lot of it is a lot of sculpting is rinse and repeat techniques and methods and checking yeah. topology and then going back and doing it again. So which lots is, of finessing. yeah, there's a heck of a lot of finessing and I don't want to waste your time in watching me do the same thing over and over again. But um, I, I want to get to the salient points and I think we've gotten, we've hit most of them. And now I want to fly in my lantern. So I'm gonna insert my lantern. And there it is. Oh, not all of it. Let's try <laughs> that again. I'm gonna just delete that for giggles because that's not working for me. I'm gonna go back, okay. Okay, thank you. And let me merge everybody down. That's a really cool lantern. Thank you very much. I used it in one of my, my tarot cards. I'm doing a, a super secret tarot card deck. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. When I was in uh, college for illustration, I um, wanted wanted so much to do a tarot deck. And... Um, I never got around to it because I'm really a, a dreadful illustrator. So when I started seeing that I could achieve what I wanted with ZBrush as an illustrator, but sculpting it, because the cool part about ZBrush for me is that I could actually get some rendering done. And mm -hmm. voila. Yeah. You know, I've got something ready to be you know, an illustration or a tarot deck. And there is my lantern. Isn't she just adorable? She makes me cry with, with cuteness. <laughs> it looks awesome. <laughs> okay. So my friends, we now have really close 
to what they were asking for. And we used the previous asset as our base, which saved us a ton of time and them a ton of money. And their change was not as expensive as it could have been. Um, so one of the things that ha you know I did not do clearly is I did not open the door. And I wanna open the door on this side, on the right side, because I have a door knocker on, I'm probably a door pull on the right side, on the left side. So let me kick that door open a little bit. <laughs> and now you can see why I chose to use, you know, not just cut out a hole, but now we have this lovely interior, this kind of evocative interior, and it's more, it's, okay, you can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. When we run, when it's we run shitty in there. It's cool <laughs> for all of you who are so hot right now. I'm so sorry. Um, anyway, we, we have all this interesting texture on the inside. And when you're doing miniatures, oh, all those little tiny details really, really matter because you really want to have those juicy, intimate details that are happy surprises so that when you do open the door on this miniature, there so, somebody's go, ah, oh my gosh, they made it look like a tree on the inside. And that's how you take it up to the next level as an artist is think about what was the thing that made you super excited about your Hot Wheel? It was opening up those doors and seeing that interior and all the little, you know, components on the door side, you know, the, the, the window crank or the, or the, you know, the door latch, all those little details in miniatures and toys and, um, you know, what a collectibles, those mm -hmm. matter. So my yeah. friend, it's done. <laughs> that looks super awesome. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. So We're next week, just to give everybody a preview, um, I'm going to do some, uh, now I'm going to just poly painting and maybe even a little bit of UV stuff so that we can make a beautiful render to present to our client and send it off. Now, UV is not always necessary, but poly painting, that's a whole new world. And I'd like to show you how I poly paint and how I do it quickly. And then I'd also like, I'd like to ask our friend Ian if he would like flex a little bit around his rendering skills and yeah, light up my picture. I think we can help. I think that'd be super fun. I'd, I'd be like honored to. That would be awesome. I'd like to learn a couple of new things too. Are there any questions I can answer? There is a question. Uh, this one was actually directed at me, so I can actually go through and answer it. But the question was, hey, Ian, I use a base mesh for my work. Or they are in real world units and height ZBrush sizes are too small at that scale. Any workaround? And there absolutely is quite a few workarounds you can utilize. So I can actually share my screen and then I can answer that as well. Um, but let's see, before we do that, I want to see if there's any other questions for you first, which I do not see. So let me just switch over real fast to this puppy, this beautiful puppy. And so right now, um, I've scaled them up. So first things first, anytime you do, um, you set scene scale in ZBrush over in geometry under size, you'll actually see this size here. And this will actually determine how big or small your object is within ZBrush. And if you set scene scale, this gets affected. But then sometimes if I kick over to my brush, you know, my brush can only get so big. I've maxed out my brush here. Mm -hmm. So one of the ways you can do it is, and actually the easiest way to do it, is come up here to preferences and come to draw. And what you're gonna be looking at is max brush size. And it's always set by default to a thousand. So if I actually kick this up to be bigger, and then I come over here, you'll now notice there's more room for me to grow my brush size. So that's one way of going about doing it. The other way about going about doing it is actually using Stager. 
So what Stager can do for you is it remembers your um, object position and the scale of that object. So if I say home stage, and then I decide to shrink this down, we let's go let's go really small for just like, you know, the wow factor. I hit F to zoom in, and then I hit target stage. Now look at how big my brush, <laughs> my brush is so <laughs> giant, it's so huge, right? So I can work with a smaller object, and then when I'm ready to uh, kick it back, I can just go switch stage. And all of my sculptural changes will go along with it, and my brush size will no longer be um, be a hindrance. So those are the two ways I recommend to adjust your brush size if you're working with a base mesh and you're capped out on not getting a big enough brush. I'm literally going to go back and I'm going to practice more with Stager because there are some tools that I do not use because they're just not all up in my face all the time. And Stager is brilliant in this workaround because I too much like sponge that was question was from spongebob um yeah. we we both work in the real world making real things that usually are really really big and um I know that you know they are working in some really big ma mammoth pieces and it can especially if you want to keep it in scale yeah thank you that was a great workaround yeah, absolutely. And then check this out too. So I do this a lot with the new feature of dynamic local symmetry. So real quick tip here, in the new 2023.1, uh, we added uh, dynamic local symmetry. Um, and so what this allows me to do is to stay truly symmetrical based on my gizmos location. So here, if I reset this back to zero, and then I come through and I start sculpting, Let's say I'm sculpting here. Let's put symmetry on. I'm sculpting. Yay. Beautiful puppy. I'm sculpting. Well, the new the new local symmetry allows me to, I'm going to kick off target stage. It allows me to move this off over here, rotate this, pivot this around, turn symmetry back on. And look, I can continue sculpting because it's based on the gizmo location. But one way, one method to actually, like if you use the gizmo, to come around here, offset, right? Now I'm, my symmetry is taken off. I can utilize Stager to reset this to its true center orientation of the mesh. That's one way to do it. I can also come through, and if I drop to a lower subdivision level, switch Stager, and I need to have this object here, what I can use is the Z Modeler brush, and then I can hover over a face, and I can use what's called Set Symmetry find my center line, and with symmetry turned off, I click one point and click another point, and now that gizmo is back on the center. And now if you if I step back up and I start sculpting again, you can actually see here turning symmetry back on, that I'm truly symmetrical again. So this is another way to kind of protect your workflow. So as you're going through and you're setting things up, you can actually use a little bit of pre uh, preventative maintenance in the, in, the, in the forefront by setting stager and then working on off, off, sec, um, off center, but still keeping uh, symmetry activated. This is really good, especially if you're building mechs and you have like truly symmetrical, you know, pieces of armor that you need to stay, but you want to work with it on your base mesh. That's a really great way to do that as well as some other attributes. So that's a few ways to go through and utilize stager on in combination with local symmetry. So there you go. God bless the programmers. They listen to us and they try to find the workarounds that we need. It's I'm so grateful for those who are in the back rooms creating everything to make this program work the way it does. It's yep. magnificent. Yep. And then real quick, what unit is ZBrush using for size measurement? It's default at millimeters. Even if it just says unit at the top, it's default at millimeters. But if you change that, in our, you go to Z plugin and then you go to boop, 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 scale master, which is down here. You could change that to millimeters, centimeters, inches, or feet. So you can change that at whim. You just have to remember which one that you click, but we give you those four options. I use scale master a lot. That's yeah, it's amazing. It's one of my favorite tools. And actually, I just go in and start sculpting like a banshee and then come back in and reset the scale of the project to where I want it to be by using yep. scale master is massively powerful. 
hundred percent. We have another question. I am really interested in how you started in this dream job. What did you use as uh, for, uh, wow, I'm sorry. What did you use as formation or um, where did you work to get such great possibilities? Oh, well, I'm lucky. I'm a lucky girl. I'm really blessed. And I, I've got to say that right out the, the door. I was born and raised in Los Angeles and I was steeped in the movie industry. It was just part of the, the, the environment. And even though I didn't initially intend on becoming a sculptor, um, I was trained by a teacher I had in junior college, oddly enough, I took a job as a mannequin sculptor and my, the teacher who I had in college was my manager and she's the one who trained me, Donna Hollander. And so for the most part, I got started in this on the out, kind of on the outskirts of the entertainment industry. I started out as a themed entertainment sculptor. And, and also a mannequin sculptor. But themed entertainment is all the things that you see at like Disneyland and Universal Studios. And when you go to a Chuck E. Cheese and you see all these sculpted things, they had to be sculpted by somebody and that's considered theming. So that's how I started. But then I moved on into movies and toys. Um, giftware more, I did a lot more giftware and um, collectibles uh, as a sculptor sculptor and I also did a lot of maquettes for Disneyland, Disneyland Tokyo and Disneyland Paris and so that's just naturally organically grew into um, a, a place where I was available as a sculptor and that was that was how I got this dream job. Um, I discovered that I really loved doing small things. I liked doing little itty bitty baby things because I like being able to hold things in my hand. And I've always loved doing dioramas. So doing little toys and thinking in that or models was really in my mindset. Um, but I did see the writing on the wall. First of all, I'm obviously not young. I'm I, I, I've been around for a couple of days and I knew that my body wasn't going to be able to withstand the kind of rigors necessary to sculpt for big things. So I really knew that I needed to start making a transition and I went and I got retrained as a ZBrush artist at Studio Arts, which is in Los Angeles. And they are a brilliant crowd that bring in professionals to teach professionals and I, I fell in love with ZBrush and I just grabbed on and I didn't let go. And now I get to do this for a living. And right now, some of my client base is people, well, we obviously started this project based off the Lady Gaga um, piano that I did. But now I'm also working with people like, you know, Disneyland again. Thank goodness they, they had faith in me. And also um, Spirit Halloween. So I am living a dream life right now. I get to work in my own studio. I get to work in a projects that are absolutely delightful. And I get to tell people about how I did it and show you, give you the gifts of, of knowing how to do a brief now. We have got Two, three out of four down now. The next one is we're going to be talking about making this pretty, presenting it to our client, and we're going to do a wrap up of the whole thing. And hopefully you guys will have some questions for me next week that I can talk about ad nauseum. <laughs> Yay. Uh, last question we're going to take uh, for the day before we wrap it up, but it came through. Hey, is there any way to export animation from ZBrush as FBX and not MDD? Um, as far as I'm aware of, MDD is the only file format that you can export out any animations you do in ZBrush through the layers system. But let me double check and get back to that next week just to make sure. But I'm pretty sure that's the only one. But um, I'll double check that. I just want to just wanted to make sure I did not forget that. So come next week and I'll have an answer for you on that. That's um, exciting because I know nothing about the animations. I use layers, but at a different capacity. So I'm excited about that. 
Yeah. All right. We're going to do just a little bit of uh, exiting out again. Thank you everyone who has been here and hanging out with us. This is super awesome. And we're going to be wrapping up next week. So in the meantime, of course, we're max on max on one. So we have all the tools for your needs for artists and creating and trying to get all that good jazz out. Um, to answer the other question that popped in about where to learn all that good information. So we have Cineversity. And if I just back up here real quick, Cineversity on Maxon.net is where you can learn a lot of stuff. And if you're looking for more specific things within ZBrush, if you go up to learn, we've imported over Z Classroom from the Pixel Logic over to uh, the Maxon channel. So if you guys are not aware, uh, Pixel Logic was acquired by Maxon. And so now we actually have been migrating a lot of that information over. So you can come through here if you're looking for very specific ZBrush information, including ZBrush Core. So all of that lives now on the Maxon One Cineversity site. Of course, we always thank you guys for showing up and hanging out with us. So we're going to be dropping some links down at the bottom where you can get a free T-shirt. And if you have all of them, I, I saw Matthew earlier, he mentioned it. He passed quite a bit. So please, you know, take a photo of all the shirts, you know, pose in them, you know. And uh, and tag us your friends, Matthew. We want to see. We want to see your team. <laughs> we want to see everything. So show it. Show show us what you got. Um, of course, we have events as well, like this one, and we also have Ask the Trainer, where you could come ask trainers questions about what's going on with ZBrush, Cinema 4D, Redshift, etc. We also have VFX and Chill, which was one of our popular series where Hashi and Seth break down, you know, VFX and they chill about it. That was horrible, but that's what they do. <laughs> and of course, we have other stuff like we have the fourth week of uh, Deborah coming in and showcasing ZBrush and for stage and screen. So again, thank you for that. And then Deborah's website, of course, go check her out. She also has an Instagram, so we're going to be sharing links for that right now, as well as I'm going to be sharing the project files currently that are going to be um, that from week one and week two. So you can go check all of that goodness out. And then earlier in the stream, I did drop links to the ZBrush calendar. So if you want to see who all the presenters are on ZBrush Live and what they do, you can come check out the calendar agenda, but you can also come and see how many artists actually come in and stream for us. There's quite a lot. And just a little kind of hidden knowledge of this website, the um, they are in order of the most streams. So Shane Olson and Ashley Adams, they cannot be beat. They've been here since the beginning. Yeah, um, they've been here since, yeah, forever. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to want to go check them out. But there are so many amazing artists that volunteer their time, showcase their workflows, their processes. I'm on there every Wednesday from 10 to noon. Unless, of course, you know, something comes up and then I always give notification that I cancel. But that's my time slot. So you could definitely come and check that out. And then we have the Zebra Summit. The Zebra Summit is in person this year as well as online. So if you're in the LA area, make plans to come to the LA area. You want to come, high five me. Hugs. I take hugs. We do all sorts of good stuff. Come on in and, you know, make sure to register. It's free to register and to show up to the event. But we're going to be offering a lot of other cool stuff, workshops are going to be happening. So we're going to be checking out and, and we're going to be- Portfolio uh, reviews? Yeah, that's always a thing. There's going to be some guarantees. There's also some other stuff I can't talk about oh. just yet. But as soon as we drop it, you're going to want to go check it out. There's also the Sculpt Off. So you're going to want to know about this. Sculpt Off is open to online. So you'll be able to- to uh, participate just like every year for the last few years. So that is it. Again, uh, Deborah, thank you so much for coming in here, hanging out I with me. I couldn't be happier, Ian. I couldn't be happier to be here and talk about ZBrush. It's my happy place. Press everybody, Deborah, wave to the people. Bye, everyone. We're going to go. Oh, no, she froze. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone.